May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our God, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'm sure some of you have heard me say this before, but for those of you who haven't, I do not like preaching on Trinity Sunday. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in larger parishes that have multiple, multiple clergy, it's usually the most junior cleric that gets assigned a tree to preach on Trinity Sunday. And the reason for that is understanding the Trinity is hard. No matter how you try to describe it, most of the time, you wind up falling into an ancient heresy of the church. But luckily, I think I've discovered a way to keep from doing that. Last August, a group of us from here at St. Stephen's participated in godly play training. And one of the lessons that the godly play instructor showed us was the lesson on the Holy Trinity. Now, if you're not familiar with Godly Play, Godly Play is our elementary school curriculum. And it uses a Montessori-based approach to these really complicated aspects of theology. So, instead of trying to keep from falling into some heresy and preach a regular sermon today, I want to share with you the way we teach the kids about the Holy Trinity. But I'm going to need some help. So all my young people, can y'all come up? I, I got a lot of stuff. I need all of y'all to come up. And even if you're young at heart, you're welcome to come up. I had to work really hard at 8 o'clock because none of them wanted to come up, and I didn't have any kids. So come on. All right, y'all can have a seat right there. Kind of spread out. Patrick and North Park, you guys can kind of spread out because I'm going to put all the stuff right there in the middle. So, the way that we teach the Holy Trinity is by using about four different stories that are all put together. But I think the way that we put them together might help us understand the Trinity a little bit better. So the first story I'm going to tell, I bet all of you remember. And it starts with a baby being born. Jesus, <clears throat> born in Bethlehem. So Patrick, can you help me out? Can you put that card kind of right there? There you go. Then remember, after Jesus grows up a little bit, he goes to Jerusalem and gets lost in the temple. His parents have to go find him. I'm trying to put that kind of right up there. I'm going to make a circle out of it. Kind of right up here. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Then, after Jesus gets a little bit older, he gets baptized. And the Holy Spirit shows up. And God speaks. And says, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. After Jesus is baptized, he goes out into the desert to pray. And to try to figure out who he is and what God wants him to do. After Jesus figures out what God wants him to do, he starts his ministry, and he goes around from place to place, healing people, like blind people, and teaching using stories called parables. Awesome. Finally, Jesus goes to Jerusalem for the last time. And he shares a meal with his friends. That night, Jesus is arrested. And the next day, 
he's crucified and dies in Jerusalem. But three days later, Jesus comes back and talks to his friends. Can we put that right there in the middle? That's the story of Jesus. Now I've got another story I want to share with you. This story is the same story that we heard in our first reading this morning. You can imagine how I did this by myself this morning. With all of this, it wasn't easy. <laughs> in the beginning, the world was a formless void. Dark, just like that. And then on the first day, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And after God created the light, He said, It is good. On the next day, God separated the waters. And after He separated the waters, God said, God said, it is good. On the third day, God created the dry land and all of the bushes and trees on the land and created the seeds. And after God did that, God said, it is good. On the fourth day, God created the spirit the stars and the moon and the sun, the day and the night. And after God did that, God said, It is good. On the fifth day, God created all the creatures of the sea and all the birds of the air. And after God did that, God said, It is good. Sixth day, God created all the things with four legs, all the people with two legs, all the creepy crawly things that go on the ground. And after God created them, God said, It is very good. And on the seventh day, God rested. All the work that God did. Now the Bible doesn't tell us this, but I think God probably said that too was very good. So now we've got two stories: one about Jesus and one about creation. Where do you guys think that these days of creation might fit? with the story of Jesus. And you can help with the congregation too. If you remember one, just yell it out. We gotta get all of these days of creation down here in the Jesus story. Anybody have any ideas? What about if we put where God separated the waters with baptism? Can we do that? Patrick, could you put that one there? All right, what else do we think? Yeah, light when Jesus was born. How about rest? Where do we want to put rest? Maybe we rest after Jesus is resurrected. Miss Bella, can you put that one there? Any other ideas? How about from the congregation? What about when God created the earth and all the land? Should we put that one maybe with, I don't know, where Jesus makes mud and heals the blind man? Can somebody put that one with Jesus healing the blind man? What about day and night? Any help? You're going to make me do all this, aren't you? <laughs> so how about if we put day and night with... You got any ideas, though? Just switching. <laughs> okay. 
How about if we put day and night with maybe nighttime goes with when Jesus was crucified and the fish and the birds. I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe Jesus was in the desert and he needed something to drink or something to eat. And then how about the people? What about right there? Okay, we can put that there. So now we've got two stories that are kind of all jumbled together, right? So I want to tell you one more story. First, I need to roll this up. Put this one down. Patrick, can you help me out and spread that out? This story starts with the birth too. But this is a birth of a guy named Saul. Saul was born in a city called Tarsus. And when Saul got old enough, he decided that he needed to leave Tarsus and go to Jerusalem. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he started studying in the temple, and he learned about the Jewish faith and how to be a rabbi, and he became a, a really smart rabbi, one called a Pharisee. And when Jesus came around, Saul didn't like it very much, and he used to not like Jesus' followers, and he tried to arrest them. One day, Saul was traveling to a city called Damascus to try to arrest some followers of Jesus. And then he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus spoke from heaven and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul actually lost his sight for three days. After Saul lost his sight, he prayed for all of those three days, and his sight came back, and he believed that Jesus was the one who healed him. So he started going around Damascus, preaching, teaching, and telling everybody about how great Jesus was and how, how right his followers were. But most of the people in Damascus, they didn't like that very much. So they tried to arrest him. So some of his friends snuck him out of the city in the middle of the night, by lowering him over the city wall in a basket. After he was lowered, Saul went out to the desert to try to figure out who he was and who God wanted him to be. After Saul figured out what God wanted him to do, he became known as Paul. And Paul started, started churches all over the place. And once he would start a church, he would write letters to them. And that's how Paul served God. Eventually, Paul decided that he needed to go back to Jerusalem. So Paul went back to Jerusalem, and he was arrested. After Paul was arrested in Jerusalem, they took him to Rome, where he was eventually killed. So, now we've got those two stories and this story. Where do you think these cards might go with those cards? What do you think about this one, where Paul gets killed? My, yep, with Jesus' death. All right, so we got to get all the rest of these in there. So when, how about when Saul is born, we can put that with Jesus' birth. What about Saul learning in the temple? Maybe when Jesus was in the temple? Yeah. How about when Saul loses his eyesight? Maybe with the blind man? How about Saul going into the desert after he escapes Damascus? Maybe Jesus in the desert? What about Paul writing letters and starting churches? Any 
Yes. How about, yeah, how about with the Last Supper and Jesus teaching his disciples? And finally, how about where Paul gets arrested? Maybe that can go here where Jesus gets arrested on his last night, right? So now we've got all three stories, and they're kind of all jumbled up, right? Looks like a little bit of a mess. So how do we make sense out of all of those jumbled up stories? Luckily, I've got an idea. <laughs> do you guys remember these from the baptism story? So when we baptize people, we baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, all of those stories are connected by those circles, right? They're all still individual stories. They're all still there. But they're connected. They're connected by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Holy Trinity is like. The Holy Trinity is kind of a three-in-one logic that takes things that seem different. The Bible talks about God and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Trinity brings all of those things together, all separate, but all together. And that's kind of like the way that we live each of our lives. We all have separate lives and different experiences, but we're all bound together by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So as we leave this place today, let us remember how interconnected each one of us are, that we all live separate lives, yet we're all one in the unity Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Do you guys help clean, clean that up real quick? You can imagine what this was like at 8 o'clock, me doing all this by myself. <laughs> I actually broke a sweat. <laughs> Yeah.